It's about honor. It's about remembering. Let's explore Arlington National Cemetery, and specifically the tomb of the unknown soldier and the changing of the guard. 21 steps south, face east 21 seconds. Face north, 21 seconds. 21 steps north, face east 21 seconds. Face south, 21 seconds. Repeat until relieved. These tomb guard sentinels, elite volunteer members of the U.S. Army's 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment. Watch the tomb 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, rain or shine, and have done so for almost 80 years. The tomb has been guarded year-round continuously since 1937, when the first 24-hour guards were posted. Since April 1948, sentinels from the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, also known as the Old Guard, have been watching over the hallowed memorial. Wait till you hear what the state of Vermont has to do with the tomb of the unknown soldier. It's more important than you can imagine. It's beautiful. It's touching. You will want to hang on to find out. The best way to explore Arlington National Cemetery is to go there yourself. As we endeavor on this amazing trip to Arlington National Cemetery, I will also be taking you to other places like Vermont and Luxembourg. Why are we going to Lux in a video about the Unknown Soldier in Arlington National Cemetery, you will be amazed. After parking in the Great Parking Garage, you will pass through security and then enter the Visitor Center where it is filled with all types of memorabilia. I will show you some of the items in there in an upcoming video. Today we're focusing on the changing of the guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The best way to experience Arlington National Cemetery is by the trolley tour. Based on the number of funeral services being held that day, the number of stops may be abbreviated, as it was on the day that we visited. Our tours went to the Kennedy family gravesite, the tomb of the unknown soldier, and Arlington House, and returned us to the Welcome Center. If you can walk around this cemetery and explore it and not be choked up a number of times. Well, you certainly should be. As we were riding around on the narrated tour bus between stops and our tour guides would talk about the graves and, and who was buried here and who was buried there, I couldn't fight back the tears in many occasions and I think you will feel the same. At the end of this video, I will reveal the connection between George Washington, Robert E. Lee, and Arlington National Cemetery. You won't believe it. You can catch the trolley at any time. They run every 15 minutes throughout the busy day. You may hop on and hop off all day long and repeating stops as you need to because you'll realize, oh boy, there was something right around the corner and I missed it. I've got to get back on and take the next stop. I hope that the day you visit, they make more than the three stops because we walked and walked and walked and it was so hot, but it's worth every minute because what did these men and women do for our country? Why can't I walk around and honor them and remember them and explore Arlington National Cemetery? Travel across America with me. Today, the property is the final resting place for more than 400,000 active duty service members, veterans, and their families. It is a place to remember the men and women who served their nation and where all who can visit can gain a sense of their sacrifice. At the stop of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, you will disembark in the front of a Corinthian-style amphitheater. This glorious Corinthian-style structure is the Memorial Amphitheater. Take some time to not only see the changing of the guard, but walk around this tremendous architectural masterpiece. It is dedicated to the soldiers. One of the inscriptions reads, We here highly resolved that these dead shall not have died in vain. This is a gorgeous amphitheater, and I encourage you to walk around and read the inscriptions and appreciate the massive structure and the fabulous architecture. It's simply stunning. There is a tiny little museum, I'll call it, with memorabilia and information about the guards and a mannequin with the full regalia and the perfect uniform. It's the tomb guard quarters. The Sentinel's Creed, my dedication to this sacred duty is total and wholehearted. In the responsibility bestowed on me, never will I falter. And with dignity and perseverance, my standard will remain perfection. Through the years of diligence and praise and the discomfort of the elements, I will walk my tour in humble reverence to the best of my ability. It is he who commands the respect I protect. His bravery that made us so proud, while well, I'm choking up just reading this, surrounded by well-meaning crowds by day, alone in the thoughtful peace of night, this soldier will in honored glory rest 
under my eternal vigilance. Simon, 1971. Under authority of Public Resolution 67 of the 66th Congress, approved March 4, 1921, an unknown American soldier was exhumed from each of the four American cemeteries in France. They were placed in identical caskets and assembled at chalon sur marne The unknown soldier was selected on October 24, 1921. Sergeant Edward F. Younger, U.S. Army, carrying a spray of white roses, entered the room where the four unmarked flag-draped caskets were resting. He slowly circled, silently placing the rose on one of the caskets. Thus, the unknown soldier was officially designated. The three remaining unknowns were then returned to the Meuse-Argonne Cemetery. The unknown soldier was placed aboard the U.S. cruiser Olympia, which arrived at the nation's capital on November 9, 1921. The honored remains were taken to the rotunda of the United States Capitol to rest in state until Armistice Day. On November 11th, the unknown soldier was moved to the Memorial Amphitheater in Arlington National Cemetery. After services in the amphitheater, the remains were borne to the sarcophagus for brief committal rites. The impressive ceremony closed with three salvos of artillery, the sounding of taps, and the national salute. And as you continue to read the sign while you were there, you will learn how other unknowns were designated as the unknown soldier. For example, the 79th Congress approved on June 24, 1946 for 13 unknown Americans who lost their lives while serving overseas in the armed forces of the United States during World War II to be exhumed from American cemeteries in Europe and Africa and shipped in identical caskets to Epinal, France. Major General Edward J. O'Neill, U.S. Army, on May 12, 1958, solemnly chose from among these caskets one to be designated as the transatlantic candidate unknown. The remaining unknown Americans were reinterred. And the plaque continues to explain how this was done other times. This is a very solemn and grave place and one that we should honor and respect. What does Vermont have to do with the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier? Vermont is synonymous with marble, and we were fortunate to tour the Vermont Marble Exhibit and Museum. And inside, one of the most compelling things was the information on the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Yes, they have an exact replica of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, and you can step in and look at the information, the blueprints, and the procedures of how it was constructed and transported to Arlington National Cemetery. Simply incredible. There's so much to learn about the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, and it reaches into not only France, but Vermont. This was one of the most interesting pictures. It had this sign on the side, Monument to Unknown Soldier, Arlington Cemetery, Washington, from Colorado Quarries of Vermont Marble Company. The loaded rail car equipped with the Vermont Marble Company's advertising sign left Proctor and traveled to Washington, D.C. The finishing details were carved on site, transforming the block into the tomb of the unknown soldier. I bet that was a bit of unknown history also. This is the original blueprint plan for the construction of the tomb of the unknown soldier, dated 1929. The contract price was $14,200 less freight of $721.50 and the builder's discount of $266.05 totaled $13,312.45. FOB, Vermont. All you accountants know exactly what that meant. 
On March 4, 1921, the United States Congress approved a resolution providing for the burial of an unknown and unidentified American soldier of World War I in Arlington National Cemetery Memorial Amphitheater. President Warren G. Harding officiated at the first internment ceremony at the tomb of the unknown soldier on Armistice Day, November 11, 1921. Soldiers never die until they are forgotten. Tomb guards never forget. On August 3, 1956, President President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed a bill to select and pay tribute to the unknown soldiers of World War II and Korea. The internment of these unknowns took place on Memorial Day, 1958. President Eisenhower awarded each the Medal of Honor. The unknowns were then interred in the plaza in front of the tomb beside their comrade of World War I. The Vietnam unknown service member was interred at the tomb of the unknown soldier on Memorial Day, May 28, 1984. President Reagan presided over the funeral and presented the Medal of Honor to the Vietnam Unknown. The remains of the Vietnam Unknown were exhumed May 14, 1998, based on mitochondrial DNA testing. Department of Defense scientists identified the remains of those of Air Force First Lieutenant Michael Joseph Blaisel, who was shot down near An Lac, Vietnam in 1972. It had been decided that the crypt that contained the remains of the Vietnam Unknown will remain vacant. Guys, I can't help but cry when I read this for you, and I will be going to a little bit more detail about the soldiers that were placed in the tombs. Honor. As you walk through the cemetery, you may see a horse-drawn caisson carrying an American flag-draped casket. Hear the firing of the three rifle volleys in the distance. Or feel a lump in your throat as a lone bugler plays the 24 lingering notes of taps. These honors remind us of service, sacrifice, and valor. The property is the final resting place for more than 400,000 active duty service members veterans, and their families. It is a place to remember the men and women who served their nation and where all who can visit can gain a sense of their sacrifice. While we were there, there was a celebration, memorial service for the Battle of the Bulge. That was an incredible blessing. As our son lived in Luxembourg for a while and had been to the American National Cemetery there to see the grave of George S. Patton, Jr., General, 3rd Army, California, December 21, 1945. The Luxembourg American Cemetery is the only American military cemetery in Luxembourg. General George S. Patton Jr. is buried there, just below the terrace wall, about halfway between the flagpoles. 5,076 war dead of the United States of America from World War II rest here. Most died in the fighting north of the city and eastward to the Rhine during the winter of 1944 and the spring of 1945, as well as in air operations over the regions. Additionally, the names of 371 Americans whose remains were never recovered or not identified are inscribed on the two stone pylons below the chapel on the paved terrace. Two stars mark the names of those who were subsequently found. 101 headstones mark the graves of the unknowns. Unknown soldiers are not only at Arlington, but at other places honoring our military abroad. Therefore, it was extra special to be able to be at a distance, of course, at the Battle of the Bulge ceremony there at Arlington National Cemetery. I encourage you to go there as soon as you can to honor, to remember, and to explore. I hope that you will subscribe and watch more of my videos that capture traveling through this fabulous nation and exploring and appreciating our American history. Steeped in history, Arlington National Cemetery's scenic landscape is a living shrine to honor our servicemen and women and the rich heritage of our country. Arlington National Cemetery is located on land that once belonged to George Washington's step-grandson, George Washington Park Custis. In 1857, Custis left the property to his daughter, Mary Anna Rudolph Custis, and it became the family home for her and her husband, Robert E. Lee. After the Lee family vacated the property at the onset of the Civil War, in 1861, the grounds were used for various purposes, including serving as a camp and headquarters for federal troops during the Civil War, and later providing a safe haven for former slaves seeking freedom. Arlington National Cemetery held its first military burial on May 13, 
1864. The tomb has a flat-faced form and is relieved at the corners and along the sides by neoclassical pilasters set into the surface with objects and inscriptions carved into the sides. The 1931 symbolism of the objects on the north, south, and east sides changed over time. On the north-south panel are three wreaths on each side representing a world of memories. Each wreath has 38 leaves and 12 berries. The east panel that faces Washington, D.C. are the Greek figures representing peace, victory, and valor. On the west panel is inscribed, Here rest in honored glory an American soldier known but to God. Tennis shoes on the ground, an unclassic road trip at Arlington National Cemetery.
Shoulder. Order. 